Hey everyone, welcome to Sharkology. The phrase cold-blooded killer is often used to describe sharks. Today I'm gonna to ask, is that really a fair reflection of sharks? Not so much the killer aspect, but the cold-blooded aspect. Are all sharks cold-blooded? And if not, what are they? That's what we're gonna to discuss today on Sharkology. So what is meant by the term cold-blooded? Well, the scientific term is an ectotherm. An ectotherm is a creature whose body temperature is determined by external ecto sources, outside sources, namely the sun, the outside environment. This is opposed to an endotherm, like us humans, where our body temperature is determined from internal sources. We generate our own body temperature mainly through metabolism. In practical terms, you can think of that classic shot of a lizard sunbathing on a rock in the morning to warm up. It requires that external energy, that external heat energy to warm its body up to allow it to start functioning and operating. Two other terms that are equally as important is homeotherm and poikiotherm. Now, a homeotherm is a species whose internal body temperature stays relatively consistent, regardless of what is happening in the environment. Alternatively, a poikiotherm means its internal body temperature fluctuates along with what is happening in the environment. Now, the question is, can you have an endotherm that is also a poikiotherm? And the answer is yes. That would be a species who elevates its internal body temperature through metabolism, but whose temperature also fluctuates with the environment. That is a strategy adopted by five very special species of sharks. This family of sharks is called the mackerel sharks, and it consists of the salmon shark, poor beagle shark, the two makos, the long fin and the short fin, and the famous great white shark. So why did these five sharks evolve this entirely unique system to elevate their body temperature when being cold blooded seems perfectly fine for every other shark species on the planet? And the answer lies in the distribution of prey. These sharks wanted to exploit marine mammals and high energy game fish. And where that prey hangs out is in the cool temperate regions of the world's oceans. So these sharks had a strategy. They wanted to extend their range into these colder regions where this highly valuable prey resided. But one of the fundamental laws of nature is you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. And these sharks knew it. If they were gonna be successful predators in cold waters, they had to have a way to maintain their speed, power, and competitive edge over this prey. And that is where endothermy entered the picture. And it did so in the form of the Reti Mirabella, or wonderful nets in English. This was a specialized blood system that allowed these sharks to retain the metabolic heat that they generated in their bodies and allowed them to then elevate their body temperature above that of the ambient environment. This wonderful net system worked in two parts. Firstly, you had the cold blood coming from the gills and the heart. As it left that area, it spread out into these capillaries, these very fine capillaries, and made a net. And on the other side, you had the warm blood coming from the shark's muscles. It also spread out into this very fine net. And where these two interacted, they intertwined and allowed heat energy to be transferred from the warm blood to the cold blood. So instead of that warm blood getting to the gills and losing the heat to the environment, that heat was redirected back into the shark's body. And ultimately, it was the evolution of this Reti Mirabella that allowed these sharks to elevate their body temperatures up above the ambient environment and start exploiting prey in these cold, temperate waters of the world's oceans. There you go. Not all sharks can be called cold-blooded, let alone cold-blooded killers. These five sharks, the mackerel sharks, are most definitely warm-blooded. 
If you did enjoy this video, please take a minute to subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification button because then you'll get notified when new videos do go up. And if you've got ideas or questions about sharks that you would like me to delve into in the future, please put them down in the comments. I do read them and I will try to incorporate them into future videos. So again, thanks for watching Sharkology and until next time, stay sharky.